Hi, I'm Kelly, and today I have an occasional video in the series, What's New in the Studio? It's where I show and tell some of my recent acquisitions in old books, paper, and other ephemera. I don't like to take pieces apart and use them in layouts until I've had a chance to share them, to show and tell and talk about some of the stories of the old pieces. And I really want to get started using these, so let's go. The uh, paper gods have been very good to me in the last three weeks, and I'm not even going to get to all of the stuff that I have found or that has found me. I have, though, been able to make a lot of printable, downloadable scans of some of the visuals here. Some are free, and they are on my website. Some are in curated bundles, and they are for sale on Etsy. So see what you think. In any case, please join me for 16 minutes of the sound of pages turning and paper eye candy. If you like old books and vintage paper, if you like altered books and journal arts, please sign up to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to turn on the notifications and you will have more of them in your life. Now let's go look at the good stuff. Recently, I ordered a lot of what I thought were these small carte de visite photographs. I was mistaken. What arrived was this big lot of cabinet cards. And I'm so glad they did. Because in a card that's this size, you can really see the detail of the old costumes. See the, the rough, the buttons, there's a little brooch there of a dog. So I'm going to show you some of these outfits while I talk about cabinet cards. Doesn't she look like Bertha in the Gilded Age? This size of a card was more popular in the 1860s, and you would exchange these with your friends or acquaintances, and then you put them in photo albums. And that was the most common way to display photos. But come more about the 1870s and 1880s, which is what we're talking about here, this size became popular, and they were big enough that you could put them on, display them on a cabinet. And so they were commonly called cabinet cards. I use these in artwork like this. This photo is actually on a very thin sheet of paper. And then that is glued to this cardboard. If I am very lucky, I can sometimes peel them away like this. And then I can cut the thin, the image out of the thin photograph and use them in altered book layouts. You do not have to go through such desperate measures because I have made printable scans of these and they are in my Etsy shop. I got these just a few days ago at my local secondhand bookstore here in Swansea. I think I am going to ask the manager of the shop if I can do a video walkthrough of the bookstore. And then I can introduce you to the battered but beautiful section, which is where I get some of my favorite stuff. He might say no, but I can ask. Here is a book that is indeed battered and beautiful. The covers are gone, but that's okay because I can now use this distressed leather cover boards and turn it into a collage. Not sure which side I'll use. I might even paint on it. So, and then it will be a wall hanging or it can be framed. They will not go to waste. The, here, 
is the, the, the front page. It's from 1817. Price, nine shillings bound. They did love a f good flourish back then. Look at that, the uh, calligraphy. This is uh, the element elements of land surveying. And inside are quite a few maps. This one in the front is hand painted. It says plan of the manor of North Hill, Somerset. And inside are a lot of figures and formulas, formulae, more maps. And then in the back, there are these, these tables, which make terrific backgrounds in collage and other mixed media things. This is Woods Illustrated Natural History. I actually have quite a few of these in a larger format, but again, I just thought this, this cover was so beautiful with the embossing. Again, it's in pretty bad shape. So the main reason I got this was because it's full of these black and white illustrations of birds and animals. I have uh, a couple of these as printables for free on my website. Go get them. And here is, um, I, I almost didn't get this. I'm just, it's, I was kind of disappointed that it had these stickers on the marble boards at first. There is nothing really inside to make these very sexy. There, there are no engravings or prints, although it's printed using the a printing press, so you can actually feel the letters. It has a physical texture. I did think I would show you this. However, sometimes when you have an old book, it will have these sort of semi deckled edges. I don't know if you can see that. It's not perfectly crisp and cut. And that is because back in the day, when you got a new book, you know these two pages in a signature are one page that's been folded. Well, the outside would be the same just because of the way the paper was put into the printing press. So this would be a fold here and you would have something called a paper knife you would take your paper knife and go and cut it open sometimes if you're reading an old novel like Jane Austen or something they'll talk about a book that is so new it has uncut pages and that's what they're talking about so as I say at first this was kind of a disappointment but then I realized that when I get ready to turn this into a piece I actually have already got my background started for me and I could uh, work into that and so it's gonna be charming it's actually got a story to it already so I like it I also got this a couple of days ago. It's called Familiar Wildflowers. I like this book a lot. I already have a copy that I have used so much for its plates of flowers, pictures of flowers. It's from the 1870s. Uh, I'm always looking for a new copy, but it's really, they tend to be pricey and not what I want to pay. So, but, but the other day I was in 
the bookstore and there was this one and it's broken. It's bust. So I was able to get it in my budget, which means I also have permission to cut it up and not feel guilty. Even more than these color, these color pieces, which are lovely, the thing that I really like about this book and makes me search it out is that at the beginning of every chapter about a flower is an initial, this is a T in the word the at the beginning of the paragraph and integrated into the initial, every initial is flowers, the flower that they're talking about. So there's, look at that beautiful scarlet poppy and pods all drawn around that ornate E. And then at the end of the chapter, there's another black and white drawing of the flower. Even though these are small, they make fantastic embellishments to a collage piece. They're very unusual, very beautiful, and I love them. I will be getting these up uh, later, but um, right now we're just going to admire it. If you've seen my videos, you know that I have a thing about vintage Catholic brocant and ephemera. I, I collect these because I'm a Francophile, and for me, these are not personally objects of devotion so much as beautiful French antiques with history and mystery. So I do cherish them uh, for their beauty and uh, their stories. These certainly have stories. This is from the 19 teens and it has hand cut mother of pearl beads. It also has a, a heart-shaped mother of pearl linking bead. And then the crucifix is trimmed in silver. A piece like this would have been carried by a young woman on her wedding day when she was walking down the aisle. It, uh, a white rosary was also popular for first communions, but I'm guessing, I'm going to go with that uh, a piece this big and this valuable might not have been given to a child. So I think this is more likely to have been a, a wedding rosary. If you know, I know that I have uh, some friends here who watch who are Catholic. Please uh, let me know in the comments and I will learn more. And so will everybody else. This is a wild piece. It is, uh, these are today called wall rosaries because they are uh, displayed, hung on a wall. This is just under five feet long. I mean, it is long. But I want to show you something. Today, these are used as decor, but back in the day, Old-timey nuns and monks sometimes wore them as belts going around their tunics, their habits. And this lady actually has a, a big one here in her prayers. So this might have been a belt. It definitely came from Lourdes because the linking bead actually says on one side in French, it says uh, souvenir of uh, Notre Dame de Lourdes. And on the other side, it says Immaculate Heart of Mary, protege nous, protect us. On the crucifix, it actually has a little bit of a, a ding here. It's, it's come apart but it isn't going anywhere because it is very much firmly put in place. If you're interested in either of these, there's a link with information 
down below. I work with old books for a living and I have never seen anything like this before. I also found this here in Swansea. These are photographs, 44 photographs from Le Palais de Fontainebleau. Now, having said I'm a big Francophile, I don't know where this is. Chateaux are not my thing. But if they were, this one might be it. Because as far as I can make out, this is a lot of house. I think that these are prints of hand-painted photographs, which is why the, 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 the detail pops and the color really pops, almost to a surreal degree. Several of these have this uh, the hallways going towards windows or doors, so you get this really fun and intriguing perspective. I am going to be using these for collage. These are just going to be uh, a canvas for a collage piece. So maybe this can be a funky chandelier. Heaven knows there's enough of them here. I don't know, but when I do start making these later in the year, you will see them. That's a, that's a bassinet for you. So, like this, this kind of a, a whimsical collage, that could be a crazy tree. Do you think that she is haunting this chateau? It's kind of unlikely because I think this is Anne Boleyn. Now, I have printable scans of Anne Boleyn and other Tudor ladies. Those are free and they're on my website. And they are super fun. If you like these, they are available as scans on Etsy. I think you could do a lot with this. I am so glad I got that done. I am really ready to start working using these images and pages in other work. Especially in my latest altered book, which has a floral theme. And tomorrow's video is going to show a new layout and talk about the techniques and how I use them. So please join me. Until then, happy making.